Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we go through a very simple use case of creating a custom migration uh, to perform bespoke actions on the database. So more specifically, we're going to create a new empty or blank migration, and then we'll go ahead and create a very simple function, which will then take the existing data in our database and import perform an additional action. And that action in this case, like I said, just a simple use case here, we're going to capitalize all the product names. Although a very simple use case, hopefully this will be a kind of a baseline for you to start thinking about and um, potentially utilizing this, this technique on your data in your database. The project files won't be available for this tutorial. However, this is a very simple snippet of code which you can apply to your project. In this tutorial, I've got an inventory application here. I've got some simple models, category, product, and media. So we're simply going to create a custom data migration, which will focus in on the product data, uh, specifically the name. And we're just going to perform an action to capitalize the name of all the product data in the database. So I've just gone ahead and created some new products here, product one and product two. So I've got some data in my database. As it stands, I have one migration. So you can see that I've gone ahead and completed the initial migration. And these are all the different fields and tables that were created. So I've got three tables here, um, media, product, and category that was created in the previous migration. So step one, then we need to create a new empty migration to start this off. So Python 3 manage.py and then make migration. So you already might be familiar with that command. So now we just need to target the app which is inventory. And then we can specify that we want to make an empty migration. And then we can go ahead and we can give this a name. So I'm just going to call this uh, inven inventory name capital capital eyes. So that gives it a nice name. So press enter there. And then we created our new migration. So just taking a look at this migration, you can see that there is, it is empty. Uh, there's no operations here that are going to be performed if I was to migrate this. And we have a dependency here because we already have a migration. So essentially this is just saying that in order to run this, we need to make sure that we run this first. So now it's a pretty straightforward process creating a new function. So let's call this uh, custom task. And then we're going to take or add two parameters here. So self and also the schema editor. So that'll be mandatory. And then we can go ahead and we can now grab um, the product schema. So let's say uh, product equals self dot get models, get model even uh, get model. And then we need to find two things here. Uh, first of all, the the app inventory. And then secondly, then the actual table or the model, which is a uh, yeah, product. So product is the name of the model inside of my models here. So inventory models product. Okay, so I've just named the model there. Right, so now we've kind of grabbed that, we can now go ahead and create a loop and loop through all the data. So for say so X or P or data, so just say for product in product uh, dot objects dot all. Um, we're just going to loop through all the data that's returned and perform the action. So here we're going to say product dot name equals product dot name dot and then we're going to capitalize. So like I said, just a simple use case here. Maybe there's fields that you want to change on bulk. And then we're going to say product dot save. And there we go. So now we go on to the more interesting point. Here we have two migrations. Let's imagine we had a, a large project here. We had 10 migrations. Maybe there is a case for, for where you wanted to revert 
a migration. Imagine you've created a migration, that's migration 10, and you decided, oh, that didn't quite work. You had some bespoke code, etc. So you wanted to revert back. So it's possible for you to do that. In addition to that, you can also migrate forward as well. It's not very uh, common you might want to do that, but you can um, go forward. So imagine you've got 10 migrations here, 10 operations that you performed, and you then decide or oh, you want to go back to migration five because your system was stable or data was stable at that point. And then you decide, oh, in actual fact, I want to go to number six. So you can migrate forward and backwards. And that's an important point to make. So here we have some custom code. So we need to tell Django in this migration to run custom code. And we can do that by using run Python. So here we're going to say migration um, dot run Python. So this is a class, you can look through the Django documentation for this. Uh, it's well worth having a little bit of a read here. So this is going to run your custom code. And then we're going to define two things here. So first of all, we're going to define um, or tell run Python what to run. In this case, custom task, that's our function. I suppose at this point we could call this the forward function because this is what's going to happen. So here we're moving forward from one, two, three, four. So if we were to migrate forward, it should perform this task. Uh, and this first parameter here is the run forward command, if you like. Now we are told in the documentation um, that we should, the first thing here, we should pass in a, a callable object that accepts two arguments. Uh, the first instance of the Django app registry apps. So sometimes you um, see this this word use app here. I just use self in this instance. And then secondly, we also then need to um, provide the instance of schema editor. And this is why the schema editor parameter is here. And again, just a, a quick read of that to bring you up to speed if you're interested. So now we can go ahead and also now define the reverse. So what should happen if we were to then reverse the migrations. Now, considering the task that we performed here, it may be task specific for you, but considering the task that we performed here, just changing the capital, capitalizing the um, names, maybe when we were to reverse our migrations, this isn't something we want to change or revert. So we can just pass a command here where we just tell migrations.run Python uh, where we just tell, where we tell Django not to do anything at all. So no op. So basically what's going to happen here, if we were to reverse, it will come to this migration and look at the reversed component here and it performs no operation at all. And this prevents any blocking uh, that might occur if we were to reverse any migrations. And there we go, we're done. So once that's in place, go ahead and start the server. Actually, don't forget to actually migrate. That'd be a good idea, right? So we need to actually run the migrate. Um, so I've already migrated. It looks um, like I've already done that. So yours would migrated and then let's run the server and we can see the data in action. So we can see here that the, the capitalization of the products have been completed. As for all, thank you very much for listening. Hopefully there was some value there. Of course, now it's just a case of going over to the documentation, have a look at Run Python, have a little bit of read through if you're interested and think about some of the other um, non-trivial actions or tasks that you might want to perform with this type of feature.